Hello and welcome back to Scale War Machines and the second part in this beginner's series on building and painting a resin figure. In the last episode I constructed the resin figure and gave some tips on doing so and then moved on to painting the face. This was all done with Life Colors excellent flesh painting set. In this second part I'm going to be looking at painting the rest of the figurine including the uniform and accessories as well as the base. In order to paint the uniform I again use some of the excellent acrylic paint sets from Life Colour. In particular I use their hemp, rope and tarp set, reference CS28. The references on screen are from their US Army uniform set. In particular I used olive drab green tone and olive drab yellow tone. This was a good match for the trousers. Going back to the tunic I painted on top of the worn out hemp with weathered hemp UA756 and painted all of the main uniform in terms of the top part. By adding a little bit of flesh second light from the flesh set I can then create a highlight colour. This was painted on all the prominent creases and folds that would catch the light. Just work with thin down paint and of course you can blend it if you so wish with a flat brush to get a feathering effect but that was a nice highlight colour for the tunic. If needs be remember it's better to build up coats just make sure you give everything a good coating. Thanks to resin you get lots of nice detail that you can pick out. I also picked out the cigarette in the same colour. Time to do the hair now and a couple of references. One from the hemp ropes and tarp set and one from the weathered wood set. This created a nice hay colour or very blonde colour for the hair that worked well for a German soldier in the desert. As you can see I added again flesh second light to create a highlight colour and this was finely painted on with a fine tip brush but also as you'll see later I just almost dry brushed it on to get a nice effect like hair. In terms of the goggles I'd already experimented with underpainting with Humbrol Metal Coat Silver and then overpainting with Tamiya Clear Orange X26. This worked well to capture the sun goggles effect and the tint in the soldier's goggles. Just apply multiple coats and let it dry in between. You can also use Tamiya Lacquer Thinner to get a nice shine in the finished result. I'd already painted a lot of the leather parts in part one using the excellent leather set and here again it was just a case of licensing those base colours from the leather set, adding a bit more of a highlight colour and just making sure that there were prominent highlights all over the leather pouches and the boots. Going back to the trousers I lightened the olive drab shades from the US Army set and again here because there were nice stark and well defined folds in the trousers it was easy to pick out the highlights. Again a good quality sable brush will really help you to hit those creases and highlights and get a pleasing effect. I picked out the band for the goggles. And then in this shot you can see how easy it is just to mix up those highlight shades. Flesh Second Light is a really good shade to create your highlights in. It's not as stark as white. It's a bit of an off-white and that works really well. Now for the deepest shadows and definition I mixed in a little bit of very dark brown and again this was dark umber hemp from the hemp ropes and tarps set. This was mixed with the tunic base colours and applied to all the deepest folds and creases and lines around the uniform and that creates a pleasing shadow effect. I find especially on smaller figures that you do need these starker shadows otherwise the highlights look empty almost. I moved on to pick out the scarf which I painted in an off-white almost turquoise colour to reflect silk. It was then time to continue with the accessories and the bread bag and for that again I used an olive drab shade from the US Army set. The mess tin had already been pre-coated in silver by Humbrol and I used a Semtex reference from Life Colour reference on screen to create a weathered and worn effect. 
The Semtex green, when applied in a disparate fashion, yielded a really convincing weathered effect with the silver underneath. This was then added to by using smoke from the Tenskron sets. That was applied along all the joins, shadows and areas around things like buttons to create defined shadows. I also used smoke and oranges, whites and black for the cigarette and embers. Tenskrons are a really useful product and I've made a video on them which you can check out in the link here. Then it was time to tackle the base and the terrain feature. This had been attached in part one and I sprayed it first using Ammo by Minx Sand Surface Primer. This gives excellent coverage and allowed me swiftly to move on to their green. With this I picked out the cactus and the lizard. Reaching again for the same manufacturer's brown tracks primer reference, I quickly sprayed the rifle. Using this brown I undersprayed or sprayed from underneath to create shadows and definition in the rocks of the diorama piece in resin. I used the leaks and staining references from Life Colour to add a bit of variety to the green of the cactus, particularly vegetable damp origin yellow, one of my staple go-to greens, and you can see the reference there. This was almost splodged all over the cactus, and indeed I used it in some of the crevices of the rocks below to depict tiny amounts of vegetation. There's another reference within the set that I reached for, and that just added a bit of tonal variety in the green. The other reference was Vegetable Damp Origin Green UA749. Again, variety is key here, and by applying it in different places, you get a effective and realistic variety in the colours of the cactus. More tense crumbs now and their sand reference. These are great water-based surface agents, they call them. But they do leave a good and realistic dust effect when you apply them and allow them to dry. I added a little bit of dust type 1. Now this is a colour from their rust and dust diorama set. Thin washes of that were applied to the terrain as well. That makes it look really dusty and dry and arid, which is exactly the look I'm going for. A mixture of the same colours, weathered hemp and a bit of the dust type 1 were then dry brushed all over the cactus and later the terrain. Dry brushing is an ancient technique really in terms of modelling, it's one of the original ones. It still has its place certainly and there it gave an effect I liked, especially on the cactus. It picked out all the relief and detail and worked quite well. I blended everything with a few top coats of different sand based colours from my airbrush. And then it was time to use some pigments. You can see the reference on the screen. These are pigments from the Life Colour range. And they were applied dry to the diorama base. You can also apply them to the subject as well, the little figure, so that the two marry up nicely. Shadows and definition could be added to the terrain using the excellent liquid pigments. Mixes of dust type 1 acrylic and dry pigments were applied all over the base and then the pigments were fixed in place using a MIG Productions product called their Pigment Fixer. The figure could then be glued to the base and here he is. The whole figurine and base by Nuts Planet is complete. The rifle has been mounted, all the accessories are in place and it really was an enjoyable little product. I'm not always a fan of these cartoonish figures, but this came out really quite well and given it was my first encounter in 2015 with Life Colour Paints, I really was very impressed. I'd used them of course for accessories and painting various armour models, but it was the first time I'd used them in earnest on a figure and I was really quite pleased with the outcome and it started off a fondness for these paints that exist to this day. In a future video, I took this figure and a half track along to Dado Light in London. And I'm going to release a video all about Hollywood lighting for your models. This will examine different techniques using a product by Dado Light called Lightstream. Their tabletop system uses a combination of projectors and clever reflectors to create all sorts of stunning visual effects that you might see in Hollywood movies, animations or product photography. Of course I can adjust the color temperature. So I'll bring in another number four reflector. I mean, for animation, I was just like, mm. wow. That's cool. I'm not sure when I'll release this video, but you can see finished pictures of the figurine here and some of the lighting effects. See you next time and bye. Subscribe for our latest videos.